as there's no change of direction, the change of momentum is just the final momentum minus the initial momentum, with both velocities being positive. In this case, the object has changed direction, so one of the velocities will be negative, and therefore the change of momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum, but the final momentum is going to be negative. We can solve part C by using an impulse momentum triangle. We calculate the initial momentum and the final momentum, and we have them starting from the same position. And then the impulse, or the change of momentum, connects the end of the initial momentum to the end of the final momentum. Once we've got the triangle, we can just apply Pythagoras and right angle trigonometry. We can apply an impulse momentum triangle to solve this problem. We work out the initial momentum, so mass times velocity. We work out the final momentum, again, mass times velocity, starting from the same point, and then the vector that goes from the end of the initial momentum to the end of the final momentum will be the change in the momentum, or the impulse. On the diagram, it's rather misleading. The impulse is not a vertical line in this situation. To calculate the required impulse, we can just apply the cosine rule to the triangle that we have created. As this is an impact with a horizontal surface, the impulse is always at right angles to the surface and therefore in this case the impulse will be vertically straight upwards. We can solve this problem by using an uh, impulse momentum triangle. We work out the initial momentum and the final momentum of the body starting from the same position and then the impulse will go from the end of the initial momentum to the end of the final momentum in our triangle and in this case the impulse is definitely a, a, is acting vertically upwards. We've created a right angle triangle and we can use Pythagoras to find the magnitude of the impulse. An alternative way of finding the impulse in this particular question is to just use the fact that the impulse is the change in momentum perpendicular to the surface and we can calculate the impulse immediately. To make the angle of deflection as large as possible, the impulse will have to be perpendicular to the fine momentum. So if we draw an impulse momentum triangle with this uh, shown, we can then just use right angle trigonometry to work out the required uh, deflection angle.